like you. We honor your name. We worship your name. We bow before your throne. Thank you, Jesus. So you be all the glory, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Good afternoon and welcome to the Well Oasis the International. This is the empowerment service and the first one for the year 2021. If you're joining us online, please um, welcome. We are grateful that you would um, take the time to be part of what we, um, the Lord is doing in our midst today. Father Lord, we just submit this time into your hands and we ask that you find glory to take from our service today. Let your name be glorified forever. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are starting a brand new book today. If you know our empowerment services are, or our empowerment service is book based most of the time. Um, we have, since we began, we have studied two books already, if I'm correct. We looked at the uh, um, the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth by John C. Maxwell. And then we looked at the seven um, laws of spiritual success by Selwyn Hughes. We're beginning another John Maxwell book today. And um, my job is just to introduce the, the book. I'm not um, your teacher. So my job is to take us through the, um, the, the focus of today's book. Now, um, or the book that we're going to study this season. Um, the book is titled, if you're buying from Nigeria, if you're in Nigeria or in Africa, the book will be titled, Talent is Never Enough. Hallelujah. But if you're joining us from the U.S. and those other places, the book will be titled, Beyond Talent. Hallelujah. If you're in Nigeria and you're buying the book, the book is titled, Talent is never enough. It is a John Maxwell book. And if you are in the U.S., it will be titled Beyond Talent. Hallelujah. My job is to bring the introduction to you, like I have said, to see why we are looking at the subject matter of talent. Now, if you've been following the well and her ministries, you would know that the Lord has told us that the major... Um, that the major... Um, tool and weapon for us for the year 2021 is what is wisdom now i was telling the volunteers at their meeting that wisdom is yes we, the bible is the predominant custodian of wisdom but sometimes wisdom will come to us from the lives of other people from the experiences and the conclusions that other people have drawn hallelujah so when talent, or, um, talent is Never Enough or Beyond Talent is a book that John Maxwell is reading to chronicle, one, the importance of talent, but the, 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 to, uh, to bring to the fore or to our consciousness the fact that even though talent is this be all and all for most people, there are many other things that you must do so that your talent will count. Amen. That's why the book is titled, Talent is Never Enough. My copy says, Beyond Talent. Beyond Talent, become someone who gets extraordinary results. Because it is possible to be talented and have no results to show. Hallelujah. Because talent is the raw material. Praise Jesus. A skill, a product, or a service is the what? Is the... Is the, is the final, uh, when, when you process talent, talent it, that's the final um, um, thing that shows up after you have processed your talent. And so because of that, you can't continue. You, I, I doubt that you can go to the bank, for instance, and say to them, I have, um, I have talent to sing. And my talent is so rich that I want to borrow one million dollars and use my talent as collateral. Because yes, you may be the one that has the best voice all over the world, but until your voice produces something that I'm willing to pay for, 
and many, many other people are willing to pay for, their bank has no business giving you money unless they are in the business of losing money. Hallelujah. And so children of God tend to think that once they have discovered their talent, that is all that there is to them. But when you discover your talent is when your job begins. The work begins when you find out what you have been endowed from heaven with. Now, if you're saying, is there even a scripture that highlights the fact that God gives talents? I would tell you the obscure one, but it's actually the most important scripture when it comes to endowment, on divine natural endowments. And that one is found in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. You've heard me speak, this, uh, speak on this scripture practically every day. Um, but the thing is, you can never get tired of it. Because he always, always, always delivers on what God, what was in the mind of God, or what is in the mind of God for us. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible says that, um, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Now, if you have read my book, Destiny Navigational Applications, if you have attended Purpose University, or you've been listening to me, you will hear me say that that dominion in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, has nothing to do with flexing. To do with raw material on the inside of you. God knew that he was taking you to the place of rulership, but he knew that he couldn't demand accountability from you unless he had endowed you with something. So in Genesis 1, <coughs> excuse me, verse 26, he endowed you with something I call the first dominion. It, is, it has the capacity to, make you, to bring you to the place of rulership, but it's just the beginning. That's why it's the first. Now, every first dominion must be submitted through template systems and processes so that it can become a product a service or what else? A skill. Because people don't pay for, for first dominion. They don't pay for potential. If you think again, I'm lying. Tomorrow morning, go somewhere and say, I'm selling. And they say, what are you selling? Say, my capacity to dance. Say, have you ever participated in a dance um, competition before? Have you ever won any awards? I've actually never danced before. But every time I sit, down, I sit down, I see myself dancing many wonderful styles. So I just came to sell that to you. People want to see videos of you dancing before they will put you in some choreographed thing that they are doing. Am I correct? So it didn't matter that you could, God told you by himself that you can dance or that you, are, you can cook. You can't show up in front of me and say I can cook and then I give you a, a contract for 10,000 naira. I'm very like that. I have to have tested your food and I'm sure that you actually know how to cook and it's not salt you are cooking. Before I will say to you, make me a pot of soup and I'm willing to pay you for it. So to say you have talent is not enough. There is a lot of hard work that goes into ensuring that your talent is ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you open to Romans chapter 12, verse number 6, for instance, it says, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them in proportion to our faith. Hallelujah. We know you have gifts, but your gift is only meaningful to the extent to which you deploy it. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, in his book, um, John, John Maxwell says, um, quoted a guy called Edward Palearon and said, have success and there will always be fools to say that you have talent. When people achieve great things, other, others often explain their accomplishments by simply attributing everything to talent. But that is a false and misleading way of looking at success. If talent alone is enough, then why do you and I know highly talented people who are not highly successful? You know, there are people who are even, they have the skill, they have protested into skill. 
That is, they went through when their parents could still beat them and hold a cane to them. They took their, they take, made them take voice trainings and all of that so they can sing. Actually, those ones can sing. So they are really good at what they do. But then they became their own adults and their own masters. And slothfulness and indiscipline will not let them show up where a gig is. What's going to happen? We're only just going to hear how when they were really young, they sang. We're never going to listen to an album from them. Or even once an album is far, one single from them we will not hear. Or a man who, because he's really talented, so his problem is not that he can't go to the studio. His problem is he does not believe in putting his money, investing his money in his own talent. So we would, he keeps looking for investors. When they ask him, what have you done so far? Nothing. Do you have a demo tape? Nothing. Yet he wants to do what? He wants to be the next superstar. Okay. Let me go on. What they will say I'm talking. Talent is never enough. There seems to be a, correl a belittle correlation between a man's effectiveness and his intelligence, his imagination, or his knowledge. Intelligence, imagination, and knowledge are essential resources, but only effectiveness converts them into results. So whether your talent is that you are intelligent or that you, are, you have great imagination or you have the repository of great knowledge, it only becomes useful when you are able to convert them to results. And what helps in converting them to results is what? Effectiveness. So no effectiveness, no results, equals to poverty. Abby? Okay, so why, when is talent alone enough, really? Um, this is Steamy from John C. Maxwell's book. He says more than 50% of all CEOs of Fortune 500 uh, companies had C or C minus averages in college. 65% of all U.S. senators from the bottom half of their school of, uh, came from the bottom half of their classes. 75% of U.S. presidents <laughs> were in the lower half club in school. More than 50% of millionaire entrepreneurs never finished college. So it's not the smarts that bring about success. But no child of me is flunking out of school. And no child of mine is, is withdrawing. All three of you. I just wanted all four of you to know because I have one that. So, so you are not, it's not that because they say that the president did not finish school. Tomorrow morning you tell me, mommy, after all, the president did not finish school. So no, you are so going. I was caught in that by myself. Praise Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not the conversation we are having. Just pretend you didn't hear me read it. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Talent is how you start off. Effectiveness, discipline, belief, and many, many other things that I will read out to you today is how you excel. Excellence doesn't just come because you have raw material. So let's assume you farmed yams last year and you had the biggest tubers of yams harvested. I don't know, is there anywhere they eat raw yam? <laughs> that doesn't happen. That yam has to go through some level of processing. So imagine that you said that after I went to the farm, I brought the yam. I will eat it like that. I don't feel like cooking it. It won't work. When we put talent into perspective, while we are not minimizing talent, we are saying that talented people have a hallmark trait or have hallmark traits that they follow through on to become successful people. Do you understand that? So what should we do with talented people? Of course, we should marvel at their giftedness, number one. 
when you see how much they can do by their, they have, and they, and they could do by their talent, you should, be mar you should marvel. Talent can enable people to do extraordinary things. And we should acknowledge people's talent and marvel at their accomplishments. We're not minimizing that you are a talented person. But we're saying that when push comes to shove, what can you show as benefits or results of your talent? And the reason why this is the book that we chose for the first half of 2021 is because in my lifetime, for instance, I have come across too many believers who are sitting on their hands, fully talented, but doing nothing. Some of them just started to do, and then they hit a snag and they stopped. And they're no longer ready to do much. When you ask them, they say, I'm praying. Then if, they, if the ones that are really spiritual say, I'm waiting on the Lord. The Lord will not buy you a form to go to school. The Lord will not take you to the workshop and say, enroll to learn a skill. The Lord, is not go the Lord does not do those kinds of things. So if you pray from here to 2022, at the end, you will still be someone who has talent and has done nothing with it. If you are talented, we, recognize your, we should recognize your contribution to society. So think about it carefully. If you claim to have talent and you are not contributing anything, let's not say the big society, just your immediate two and three gathered people. What kind, what use is your talent? Because everything that God put on the inside of us is meant to be beneficial to another. We're supposed to serve people by the gifts that God put on the inside of us. But you see, these gifts come raw. Because for instance, if you are, if, you know, there are people, there are people who trained as architects. And there are people who just came from the shop with the capacity to build. They just came from the shop. They look at the thing. My husband can tell you in pitch darkness, that a wall is not straight. He'll be coming back from work at 11 p.m., and then he'll say something like, oh, that when he came, that when he was coming back from work, that he swung by 30, 30 what's that address, that 42B, that he, he swung by 42B, and he saw that what, uh, what's that man's name? I can't remember his name. That what he, the wall he, he raised yesterday was not straight. This is him telling me at 5.30 a.m. And I'm wondering, when did you come home? He says, I got home at about 11.30. Um, was it that you have been there since 6.30? He says, no, as I was just coming, I drove and I shone the light of the car to the house and I could tell the wall was not straight. I, I didn't understand it. I can, I can still never understand it. But he's not even a trained architect or builder. Imagine that he's a trained builder. Do you understand the conversation I'm having? He has the talent. But how many of us would employ him? He's a lawyer and he's a... How many of us are going to employ him as the supervisor of our next project? If I you won't employ him. You don't employ him. Why? Because he has a talent, but he has not processed it into a skill, yes? He can use it for his own building, but there are things that if people want to hire people for that kind of thing, for, they would ask, do you have this? Have you built before? You know, there are other technical things that will make someone hire someone to do that for them, isn't it? So he has the raw material. But until that raw material is taken through whatever the fire would look like for it to be cooked enough for them to eat then it is not useful it not that it's not useful it's not marketable do you understand it do you understand it okay so let's go on so while we recognize that you have talent we would really celebrate when your talent begins to contribute to society hallelujah when people have talent we should separate what they can do from who they are you are one person, but you can do this. But until you process your talent to be able to do, both you and your talent, you are one. Because every time we ask you, you say, they inside me. It's like me standing here and saying to you, I have, I, um, well, I've written books, so maybe that doesn't count anymore. But I just sit here and say, I, 
my, I wrote the best fiction. I have the best, the best fiction novel you, would ever re you have ever read. And you asked me what's the title, title. Like, I don't know yet. I said, why? Do you, I thought you said, no, I just know that if I wrote one, I would do very well. I just haven't written it yet. You would think like, I'm not serious, right? You said, Stabi, stick with church books that you are writing. The day we see you write fiction, then we will read it. By the way, I can't sustain fiction. I cannot write fiction. I can't write 200 pages of fiction. It doesn't work. Praise Jesus. The giftedness is usually greater than the person. Your talent is greater than you are. That's why no matter who you are, what puts you on the map is not your name, just your name like that. It's not uh, that you are male. That's not what puts you on the map. On the map. What puts you on the map is what you achieve. Do you understand it? So what you do is what your talent is about. That's assuming you process it. It says here, it says, um, it says, it says talent for talent's sake is a bubble and a show. Talent working with joy in the case, in the course of universal truth, leaves the possessor to a new power as a benefactor. Let me break that down because it looks like too much English. When a man possesses talent, and he uses it, he processes it, it, he processes it, and he uses it to serve. That thing moves him away from someone who just has talent to someone that people look up to for something. Hallelujah. Amen. So talent is the raw material, it's not the finished product. And so what we want to focus on in the next um, maybe like 24 weeks is take you through step-by-step -step tools on how you become the person who works your talent out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A man was said to have said that the toughest thing about success is that you have got to keep on being a success. Talent is only a starting point in business. You have got to keep working that talent if you will continue to be relevant. And whether you know it or not, relevance is the key. And just having a talent is not enough. Your relevance will determine, what you do with your talent will determine whether in 2024 you are still relevant. Which is why, for instance, all the big telephone makers, for instance, you know that they change their phones, the phone models, they release a new model every other month, every other year, right? In every couple of years, there is a brand new Samsung phone. And initially, it didn't matter that they had new ones. We could continue to use our 17, 14 old, and it won't work. It won't spoil. But with the rapidity at which they are churning them out, even the ones that they make now have a lifespan. How many of you have just been, you woke up one morning and your phone refused to come on? You didn't drop it. You didn't have a fight with it. It just refused to come on. Because... They have newer models out there, and they want you to go and buy a new one. So all of you that have phones that when you are, talk, you are typing on it, it's shaking. Just go and buy another one. That's why they have newer models. But do you have what it takes to process your talent? Do you what, have what it takes to process your talent from just what it is to what it can become? Do you have what it takes? Because what it takes is a lot. Because everyone has talent. There's not one person who does not have talent. Everybody. You may not have as many as the next man, but everyone has talent. People have equal value, but not equal giftedness. But there's not one person who, does, who is not gifted. Praise Jesus. There's, there's some of us that can sing, but we are gifted enough to be able to tell when someone can sing well. You know it's marketable, right? You can't sing, Sha, but if somebody is singing right, you can tell them. They are not singing well. You can also tell them. You have an ear for music. You just don't have a voice for it. It's okay. There is your place in the music industry. You know that, right? If you look at, how many of us know Marcus Buckingham? How many of us have heard about him? Uh, these people in this room don't read. He's the, he's the, him and somebody else are behind something called the Strength Finder Test. How many of you know the Strength Finder Test? It's a test that you run online to tell you where your strengths lie. Praise Jesus. They wrote something, and I want to read it out. It said that um, every person is capable of doing something, 
Every person, pay attention to this. Every person is capable of doing something better, better than the next 10,000 people. You need to let that sink in. Every person, every single one of us in this room can do something better than 10,000 people on earth. There is something you can do that 10,000 people on earth cannot do. You can do better than 10,000 people right now. That may sound almost impossible. Because somebody is sitting there and say, a whole me, this or this small me, I submit something past 10,000 people. It's the truth. And they have scientific research to prove that this is true. Every single one of us, there's at least one thing you can do more than 10,000 people. But if you sit there and you begin to use the wrong measuring tape for your life, the tendency is you would not recognize that to be able to do more than 10,000 people is a huge blessing. They call this the strength zone and they encourage everyone to find it and make the most of it. It doesn't matter how aware of your abilities you are, how you feel about yourself or whether you previously have achieved success, you have talent and you can develop talent. And so there's not one person again, whether you are online or in this room, that would say this evening or this afternoon that, oh, that book doesn't, is not for me because I don't even have talent. So since they are talking to people who have talent, it does not concern me. Every single one of us right now listening have the capacity to do one thing at least more than 10, better than 10,000 other people. Hallelujah. Number two, do you have what it takes? Develop the talent that you have, not the one that you want this <laughs> what did i say develop the one you have not the one we're in church so not the one you are praying for oh father in the name of jesus the kind of grace upon sister b jump where that's not working develop the one you have the reality is if you are around cynical people when you start to develop whatever it is that you have, do you know what they will say to you? They will say this ordinary thing. They told me, they said, when you, people are talking, you will be shouting, superpower is words. Who does not have words? Just watch, I'm coming. Praise Jesus. I don't know if you get it. So develop the one you have, not the one you want or the one you are praying for. There are people who haven't done jack with their lives because they are waiting for one. When I grow up and when I get this one. You see, when I go to the U.S. and I just go to this school and I come out. One thing I teach people is to stop developing or working on their weaknesses and focus on working on their strengths. This is not me. This is John Maxwell speaking. He says that on the scale of one to ten... On the scale of 1 to 10, if you are a 5 in anything, or let's say you are a 4, because some of us think a 5 is the be on end all of something. Let's say you are a 4 in something. If you take a lifetime to get better, because a 4 is kind, mildly weak. If you take a lifetime to work on, your, on that thing you are a 4 at, the best you can become is a 6. But if you're already a 7, and you spend time on working more on what you already are a, a seven at, you become a nine. You tilt the scale. You, be, you fall quickly into, uh, in the 2% of people who stand out. Does this make sense? So why are you busy trying to develop from three to five? You will end up in five anyway. So let's, I, I imagine you didn't know, but now you know that if you take your three and you pray and you fast and you sow seed, and you go to school, all of those things, and you do them, your three will only still end up at best a five. If Jesus helped you a six, that's still not the top of the, of the ladder. But if you're already a seven, let's say you have ten things, and out of those ten things, in seven, seven of them you are three, you are two, you are four, you are five. But in three things, you are seven, you are eight, you are seven. John Maxwell says, don't put your money to be investing on the three and the twos and the fours. Focus on your seven 
and your eight. Because in a short time, you will get two steps ahead of that, which means that you become a nine and a ten quickly in something that you are already excellent at from the shop. Does this make sense? So please, what did I say? Develop the talent you already have, not the one you want or the one you are fasting and praying concerning. Number three, anyone can make choices that will add value to their talent. Absolutely anyone can make choices that will add value to their talent. All of life, what creates effectiveness is the choices that you make. The key choices, choices you make, apart from the natural talent you already have, will set you apart from others who have talent alone. Destiny is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for. It is a thing to be achieved. What that means is that destiny does not happen to you. Hallelujah. What did I say? Neither can someone lay your hands on you and destiny shows up. I know you. You know how they would say, let's lay hands on somebody and activate the grace. That grace better activating you hard work so that you can do the work to get you on the other end of the scale. Those things don't happen like that. The way God sets the earth up, we have to do the work. Hallelujah. So actually, we are going to do this for, oh, 26 weeks. Let me take you through all the chapters that you need to look forward to. Number one, belief lifts your talent. Number two, passion energizes your talent. Number three, initiative activates your talent. Number four, focus directs your talent. Buy the book. Don't tell me to go slow. Number four, focus directs your talent. Number five, preparation positions your talent. Number six, practice sharpens your talent. Number seven, perseverance sustains your talent. <laughs> Courage tests your talent. In fact, there are some of these things I'm going to teach them by myself. Courage tests your talent. Teachability expands your talent. Relationships influence your talent. Relationships influence your talent. Character protects your talent. Responsibility strengthens your talent, and teamwork multiplies your talent. All of these things, you have talent in them, but that means that if you have no belief, if you have no passion, if you, can take, if you can't take initiative, if you're not a focused person, if you do not understand the power of preparation, if you are not practicing, if you are not persevering, if courage is something that eludes you, if teachability is something you quarrel with every time, if you are not pushing character, if relationships don't exist in your life, if you don't take responsibilities for anything, and if you don't belong in a team, you will be majorly talented, but you will produce nothing. However, we are faith people, so you can do it, is what I can tell you today. Praise Jesus. There's not a prayer. It's an affirmation that you really can do it. What matters is how you step up to do it. Praise Jesus. There are many things that don't require talent. Many, many things. Punctuality does not require talent. Yet, a lack of punctuality can destroy great talent. I said it, we laughed. Effort does not require talent. It's a decision you make and say, I will try. Patience does not require talent. Otherwise, we will have excuse. People like me. Unselfishness does not require talent. It just means saying no to yourself. Now, as easy as these things are for anybody who wants to do them, there are majorly talented people who can't do these things. And because they can't do them, their talent does not release anything. Every time you have a room full of creatives, people who are ingenious, people who have capacity 
Tojirim. In that room, what do you find? Those in worship tell me, you find people who have zero regard for time. Their big thing is they don't respect time. Tell them to come at 6, they will come at 12. When you gather people who are majorly talented in a room, you will find people who have no regard for accountability. You will find people who are impatient, people who are brush and rush with their tongue. And why they are talented, remember that teamwork multiplies your talent. So these people can't have people around them, for instance, the ones that are brash, who would contribute their quota to their talent to make it spread out. So my brothers and sisters, talent is, not, is never enough. There is so much more beyond the fact that a man is talented. Praise Jesus. There is so much more beyond the fact that a man is talented. So the way we usually would study this book is somebody would teach it as John Maxwell is reading it. And someone else will come and teach it straight out of the Bible. Take the same principles and find scriptural backing for them so that you see that these things are in the mind of God for your life. Praise Jesus. So therefore, if you have the habit of only joining, if you're online, the main service, and you think the empowerment service, nah, I don't need it. Let me not say so that you're not vexed and switch off your data. But you need to join the empowerment services going on beginning from next Sunday. There are a group of people known as talent plus people. Talent plus people are people who don't only possess talent, but they now have all these other things that we've talked about. And so you find that their talent just continues to soar. They are purposeful, they are focused, they are patient. They have great belief. All of those things come together to add to the cooking of a great pot of whatever. I know you want to eat rice, but rice alone is no meal. How many of us know that? I know you like lamb, but lamb alone is not a, a meal. You know that, right? There are other things. That's why nutritionists have something they call the balanced diet. Even with your, um, what's it called, with your talent, there are other things, the ingredients you need to balance them out so that you can cook a great meal every time. As this journey will begin, I would encourage you to get yourself an exercise book or notepad exclusively for the teaching of this book. That's how I used to do it. Have that ex just on the side and you don't use it for other scribbles. Just focus it on this. And make sure you buy the book so they go together. It becomes your handbook for what the book is saying. I promise you, if you learn the principles and you apply them, soon you'll be able to tell us how far you've gone. Because the Bible says, get wisdom. And in all thy getting, get understanding. We've been making a lot of wisdom declarations since the year began. I will continue to make them. But what's the point of making declarations that you don't work? When you finish making your declaration, pick up these principles, learn them, and put them to practice. And I know that we will celebrate with you the gains that can come from possess, possessing, processing your talents into something that is marketable or something that is impactful. Thank you so much. Like I said, um, I'm not the main teacher for this. But from next Sunday, somebody will come and take you chapter one. The book again, if you are in Africa and Europe, the book again is Talent is Never Enough. If you are in the Americas, the book is Beyond Talent. Author is John C. Maxwell. God bless you.